Oh, no, I don't want that. Sweet. Hi, everyone. Oh, so who's timing me? OK, Sherman's. Oh, great. You already. Thanks. OK, better living through CI. So um, most people who use CI think of it as, hey, I do some stuff, and then every time I do a git commit, my tests run, or like some other version control system. And so, like, that's cool, but like, that's not really very interesting. Like, well, you know, who cares about CI? But like, think about it for a second. You're basically getting a server to do something that you wanted to do every time a certain thing happens. And in this case, a certain thing is a git commit. And uh, get into, uh, and, you know, it seems like you can't get away from that, but I'll get into that a bit later. But the idea is that every time you do a git commit, you can get a server to run any script that you want, within reason. Like, you know, you can download pretty much anything you want to download, install anything you want to install, run anything you want to run. And that's really, really awesome, right? So the simplest way that, so one thing that a lot of people have started doing is that they, well, yeah, I guess the first thing you do is that, hey, this is like, oh, you can't really see that. That's, that looks really small. Uh, can I? Yes. OK, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, hey, I have this script, OK? And when I do, when I run it, like, things happen on, on, a, on a computer that, oh, and this is free, by the way. That's really awesome. Did I mention that Travis is free? So I, like, can basically get a free computer to run whatever I wanted to run. That's great. Like, who needs servers, right, when you have this? So anyway, so it runs my tests, and that's sweet. But one other thing that you can do with it is that you can get it to run your, uh, to build a website. So instead of having, like, a CMS or some other, like, dynamic system, what you can do is you can have GitHub pages, and you can literally create, write a script that takes some stuff and builds it, builds it for you every time you make a commit. So every time I make a commit, my website is, is updated like that. It's really cool. And it's like, having, uh, it's like having like a Drupal website or something like that, except it's much more, it's every version of what I'm doing is, also, uh, is saved and, every, and everything is, like, happens every time I do a git commit instead of like, and I, know I don't have to mess with any servers. Uh, so again, like I said, you can have it run any script that you want. So this is the thing that actually pushes things to GitHub. So that's not, an, that's not all. There's this thing called Pandoc, um, which literally converts between lots of different document formats. You have your, um, you have Markdown, a special kind of Markdown it supports. It can create LaTeX. It can um, convert between, like, you can create a document, like, you know, like a Word document if you want. But what I would like to do is I, I'd like to use it to, I'd say, hey, if I can install uh, Pandoc and all that stuff, then I can use it to create a resume, which is really, like, the, you know, the ultimate aim of everything that I do is to polish my resume. To, fi to a fine shine. So if I can get this anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't seem to be working. Uh, so I, this is the, yeah, again, this is the script that actually makes that happen. But so far, everything that I've told you happens every time I do a git commit. And you know, that's frustrating. What if I want something to happen like every day or like every hour? And all of this I mentioned is to do with uh, Travis, but there's lots of other CI systems out there. There's Circle CI. There's a thing called Jenkins, which you have to install and put on a survey yourself, which is why I haven't mentioned it too much. Jenkins can do cron things. And if you're not familiar with it, cron is something that allows you to run a command at a certain interval. So it's like, OK, great. I can do all this stuff, but do I have to like, set up another server and have that you know, do git commits to my repository? And then I was, you know, this would be really, really frustrating, except Travis supports cron. So you, can, so you can not only do something on a git commit, but you can do something. I think uh, the free version doesn't allow you to do anything with more granularity than one day. But that's OK. Uh, there's lots of other CI systems you can use, lots of other cool things you can do. And um, so all of this stuff has to do with documents. And you, you might think, OK, great, it's good for creating documents. But no. Um, I was talking to someone uh, a few months ago who was saying that they use Jenkins for the ETL system. So literally, they process all this data and uh, transform it and like, put it into a database using Jenkins. And at work, we use Jenkins to, um, to like, provide a GUI for everyone to like, deploy servers. You can literally deploy servers using Jenkins. And that's what we use it for. So so far, I've talked about building software, using um, building software uh, updating my blog, updating my, uh, updating my resume, and um, doing, doing cron things, ETLing, and, and more. So the sky is the limit. Literally, CI is a way for you to get a computer that you don't care about to do whatever you want. And that's awesome. And that's all I have for you. <laughs> any questions from the audience? Yes, any questions from the audience? Is, is using it this way in any way against their terms of service? Or something? Oh, um, do all the things that I described to doing with Travis are definitely not against the terms of service. 
Um, there's nothing that it, yeah, they have to, they do have terms of service. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, I'm not, I'm not mining Bitcoin on them. Although, funny, fun fact. <laughs> Now that you now that you mention it, uh, uh, you know since uh, uh, I've just I've just been reminded, there's actually like a, some software that um, <laughs> you have to stop it and then start it again so I can answer questions. So there's actually so there was malware that was um, that infected people's uh, repositories that literally mined Bitcoin using their Travis CI service. So it's another thing you can do. It's against the terms of service, and I probably wouldn't, I would definitely wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. So that's another thing you can do. Um, Terms of service, no. And again, if you can get your own server and put Jenkins on it, you can essentially do whatever you want. You know, who's who's stopping you? Yeah. Any more questions? So in, in the GitHub pages update example, how does it get the credentials to? Oh, that's a good question. So you don't want to put your credentials out there for everyone. So I actually have a. Um, hmm. I have a yeah. I have a GitHub token, and I can put that on my um, on my Travis thing separately. So, so that that I just have to go in the GUI and like add a GitHub token. The GUI, okay. Yeah, although although there is a there's a separate thing that like um, I think over here there there's a section I think it might be in my in a, another one of my Travis's. Uh, there's a section that allows you to encrypt some data and put that in. So that's a Travis specific thing. But the point is that it's possible for you. Oh, that's another benefit of it. So at any point I can see what I've tried to what I've done to build my website just by looking at the the source code. So that's that's a really big innovation that I think in my opinion Travis had over. Jenkins or something else. Because in Jenkins, the way you configure a job, at least historically, is you go into the GUI, you click around a lot, you enter some stuff, you save it, you try it, doesn't work, you, you know, edit some more. Whereas in, in Travis, you do a git commit with your, with your test instructions. It doesn't work, you fix it. You, know, you just keep doing that like 50 times, but it, at the end, you get, get something that's working. Any more questions? What's the time limit of a job in Travis? What's that's a good question. So this is not a, <laughs> this wasn't intended to be a Travis tutorial, but since you asked, uh, I think it's about 15 minutes. I mean, in fact, maybe more. It depends. It depends. If you're trying out one of their like, so they containerize their builds now, and they they give you like a lot of time. But if you use one of the newer ones, then they like limit it. Like, I think I ran I ran into that a few times. It gets really frustrating to the point where I'm just like, you know what? Maybe I should just switch to Jenkins. Five, right? five, oh, five zero. Okay. Yeah, five zero is, is quite substantial. You yeah. can do a lot in 15 minutes. And if you can't, then it's probably problems with caching or like building build infrastructure that you can solve in other ways. Yeah. More questions. So what format do you create your blog posts in? Oh, so I used to use this blog generator called Pelican, which was written in Python. But I've recently converted to Hackill, which is another blog static blog generator written in uh, Haskell. So that's actually, uh, if I go to my, my most recent version of my stuff, I actually didn't want to mention this because I didn't want, it to be, didn't want this to become like a Nix thing as well. So Nix is a, is, an, um, is a package manager that does very aggressive build caching. So most of the time it takes for me to run my Travis jobs used to be in like installing and compiling the version of uh, Haskell that I use, the Haskell that I use and the packages that I need. But this does it pretty much instantly. So if I, um, and what it does is that uh, the only script that it runs is actually inside my, my thing itself. And I can like run a like run a shebang and like run, do my script, and it 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 happens like this. The last time I did it, it happened in less than two minutes. In less than two minutes, I did a build, and I have tons of time, so I will show you. Yes, it ran yeah less than three minutes, but the one before that happened in less than two minutes. So instantan like actually like really really fast. So before I you know I used to make some changes, and then it would take like a really long time to build. It would take like 10, 15 minutes. But using Nix because it does like really aggressive like. It, it get, basically makes it really easy for you to download binaries unless you make lots of changes. It, it just happens really quickly. So yeah. So if you pushed your block now, you kick off Travis. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so we don't actually have enough time for me to try that, but I can show you if you want. Uh, I don't know, how do, how, what, what change would you like me to make? And, and yeah, sure. I'm happy to. I'm happy to demonstrate that later, for, for anyone who's interested. Cool. cool. I guess that's it. Actually, I don't don't feel like people are especially keen in learning more about CI. I feel like I've told you everything you need to. That's fine. Cool. Thanks, everyone. See, five minutes. Like even less. I just. <laughs>